Okay, so after much speculation, we've finally gotten a solid explanation of Diablo 4's endgame. And it is not good. Every part of Sanctuary is fulfilling and satisfying. I wanted to be positive. I wanted to hope. But what so many people who commented in my previous videos and the negatives seem to have been correct. Every part of Sanctuary. Blizzard are a bunch of lying, thieving, allegedly not good game developers. Fulfilling and satisfying. And it looks really, really bad. Okay. So I'm going to break down the major points in the video with the first point actually in reverse order because the first thing they say in the video is the worst thing. And I want you to keep watching so you can hear the worst thing at the end of this video. But anyways, let's get started. Numero uno, the Paragon system. Do we really need an explanation of this in a video about Diablo's in-game. Of course, you're going to have a Paragon system. You did it in Diablo 3. The system is identical to Diablo 3. I can see it in the video. You level up, you gain more stats. That's it. I mean, I guess that's cool. There's nothing wrong with having a Paragon system in your game. I can see how it aids game progression. Nothing wrong with it. But I, I was always so super excited by the Paragon system in Diablo 3 and it was so incredibly fun that I always thought of it as a completely crucial part of the in-game progression. It's not. It never was. It's, it's a nice thing to have on the side, but it's just more stat increases on a hamster wheel. And Jesus Christ in the video, they're talking about adding build diversity while they're literally showing you a video of you clicking on plus five strength plus five dexterity, plus five strength. These are basic stat increases. You're trying to sell people that this is some path of exile style skill tree that's gonna add build diversity when all you're doing is giving incremental stat upgrades for more levels. <sighs> Anyways, number two, Codex of Power is boring. They don't even really go into it in the video because they don't want to explain it because it's so boring. Basically, you gain items from doing dungeons. You put the item on an item, and then it does a thing. Whoa, I wonder if any RPGs have discovered doing that. Oh my god. Look at, look at, look at their faces. They know this sucks. It's just so cringe. Number three, maps. No, no, sorry, mythics. Oh no, <coughs> no, Nightmare Dungeons. Oh, are you really? You're allowing your players to enter into dungeons and add affixes to the dungeon by crafting a sigil? It's definitely not a map. Nope, there's no maps here. That would be allegedly, allegedly copying someone else's game design. These are sigils with affixes that create dungeons. No maps here, sir. And from the description of it, these won't even be dungeons that are unique or randomly generated to the maps. These are just going to be the same dungeons that you already played for in the campaign with modifiers. And that's it. I loved the mapping system in Path of Exile, and I do not blame Blizzard for wanting to implement something similar. I really think the map system in Path of Exile is, is really great. But I can already tell you that it will be worse than PoE. There is no way Blizzard are going to give anyone the freedom of crafting maps that PoE does. They are going to gear gate and make it predictable because their game design doesn't allow them to give players that kind of freedom. Not since the old days anyways. I even mentioned this in my previous video where I said I doubted Blizzard would implement this kind of game design because it doesn't suit their overall strategy. Blizzard are very conservative game designers. They rely heavily on data and metrics in order to construct their games. And this system, unless incredibly restrained to the point that it becomes boring, goes against their game design philosophy. And if you want to think that I'm wrong, Think about that time in Path of Exile you made a map that was going to instant kill your character anytime they walked into it within a second because you weren't paying attention to the affixes you were modifying. There's no way Blizzard will allow that. They will not allow you that freedom, and that freedom is exactly what made the Path of Exile map system so much fun. If 
I were a Path of Exile dev right now, I would be feeling so freaking smug at this moment, sitting there, stroking my beard, watching the money roll in from all those customer purchases and looking at Blizzard thinking, damn, do you know how hard it is to get a system like that right? But yeah, that's fine. Blizzard want to borrow from PoE. But you might say, hey, that's a good sign in some respects, right? At least they're not just going around willy-nilly nicking for everybody. They've looked at Path of Exile, they've seen its success, and they're trying to take some ideas from it and modify it in, in their own way. They're definitely not just going around and making a, an endgame for a AAA a ARPG MMORPG-ish thing where they just steal ideas from everyone, right? <laughs> uh, number four, Helltide Areas. So this game has a public quest system where you trade items for a random cache containing random drops <laughs> because we're in 2012. Are we playing Rift or Warhammer Online? Look, this system was boring back when it was in those games in 2012. It was initially sort of a cool thing, but we've been there. We've done that. Other games have moderated the system and made it more interesting and engaging. I still freaking hate public quests, and that was in an MMORPG where they make sense. But in an ARPG? Public quests? As in-game gearing? I mean, this is ridiculous. I like public quests for games like Final Fantasy XIV, where I might want some extra XP or reputation or things like that. and. In an MMORPG, I accept there's going to be some sort of a grind, and public quests are, you know, one fun way to grind. But in an ARPG, public quests as in-game? The, the lack of imagination is so painful that it hurts my mind. And if you're still with me, we're going to get to the worst thing about this video in a moment. If you stayed around so far, please like and subscribe. It helps keep me motivated to keep making more content despite what Blizzard keep doing to crush my soul. Capstone Dungeons Now in this video, you really need to pay attention because the developer talks about Capstone Dungeons as you need to pass one dungeon to upgrade into the next phase of the end game. You gain access to a special what we call Capstone Dungeon that they have to complete. Why would you do this kind of game progression? So to progress through the game, to get into the higher levels, there's one dungeon and you need to do it. And I guarantee you what the mechanics behind that dungeon will be. They will be DPS check and a gear gate. Because what they're gonna do is they're going to structure the game such that you need to pass through that dungeon. Heck, they don't even, they even say it. You need to beat that dungeon to progress to the next tier of the end game. And the reason they want you to do that is so that they can later monetize progression by give by putting a single thing that you need to complete. They can completely control the metrics for your progression through the systems of the game. And at a later date, should for financial reasons they decide that they need to, they can add ways for you to speed up that progression. And here we get to it. They don't only steal from Path of Exile, they also just nick Lost Ark's monetization system. Will it be there on launch? No, I doubt they're even competent enough at this point to get a goddamn Korean-style store in the game on launch. But they have set up the systems by which, should they decide to, they will add that in. Is it good for players? No, no one wants that. No Dia other Diablo games are gated by single dungeon progression. We know what that system's from. Anyone who's played a mobile game has seen that system. Anyone who's played a Korean MMORPG has seen that system. We know what it's designed to do. It's designed to monetize and gate content. I normally try and stay calm in these videos despite the hate I get sometimes, but this is absolutely disappointing. I thought, given this is Blizzard, they may have some new ideas. Maybe they looked at Path of Exile and saw things the game was doing wrong and tried to fix them, make them more accessible to a wider audience. Maybe they saw the good in classic Diablo or Diablo 2 and tried to reinvigorate some of the aspects of the, that game design. 
but we can know more or less for certain at this point. They're going to copy as the core of the early in-game progression, Diablo 3 systems. And then for the more later in-game, they're going to steal the map system from PoE, but they're going to gate it behind a Lost Ark style system. And it feels at this point like Blizzard are taking the worst of all worlds.